Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webcast. We are coming to you live from Elliott Hall on the campus of the University of Hong Kong. My name is Jeff Timmermans, and I'm the director of the Bachelor of Journalism program. With me here is AJ Libanow. Hey, everyone. He's the deputy director of the program. We're going to give you a brief overview of the Bachelor of Journalism program, and then we're going to open it up for Q&A. You can type any questions you have into the chat box on your screen, and we will do the best we can to answer. But I want to start by asking you a question. And after that, I'll tell you a secret. My question is, what do all these careers on your screen have in common? Take a look, and then if you have any ideas in the answer, type your response into the chat box on your screen. There's no one right or wrong answer, so don't be shy. In fact, there are many correct answers. So what possibly could they have in common? You can see there are a wide variety of careers. We've got Reuters correspondent. We've got South China Morning Post cadets. We've got solicitor, educator. PR executive, Twitter executive, a very wide variety. So what possibly could they have in common? Any ideas? What do you think, AJ? Um, You're the deputy director. You should probably know this by heart by well, now, I mean, considering like, how many times we've done this. They but, have um, to be good communicators. I know that for sure. A, a plus for AJ. That's correct. <laughs> they all have to be good Thank communicators. You. Wow, you've actually learned a few things oh. in, in, in the many times we've done this. Oh, Thank you very much. But there's actually another answer to that question. They're all careers pursued by recent graduates of our program. And now for the secret. Do you know the answer to this? Do you know the secret? Have I told you the secret? No, I don't think you did. The secret is I hate the name of our program. Hey, what? Yeah, it's true. Huh. I never told you that. Mm -mm. It's true. I hate the name of our program. And it's not because I hate journalism. In fact, I think the events of the past few months in Hong Kong have shown that journalism is far more important than it ever has been before. The reason I hate the name is our program is about far more than journalism. And I think the recent events in Hong Kong have also shown us that journalism is everywhere now. Everyone has the potential to be a journalist. And there are now a wide variety of careers that require journalism skills. And that's why actually fully half of our graduates pursue careers outside of journalism. But they're all careers, as you can see, and AJ told us, require outstanding communication skills. So that's why we've added a tagline for our program. We're the Bachelor of Journalism program, but we're a communications-focused double major degree for the digital age. So how do we do that? And what is that all about? And what makes our program so special? Well, first of all, it's very international. Our students come from all over the world, from Mauritius to the United States, from China to Iran, from Syria to Pakistan, and of course, Around half of our students come from Hong Kong as well. And once our students get here, we want them to continue to broaden their horizons by going on exchange abroad. Not only do our students have the opportunity to participate in the Hong Kong U Worldwide Exchange Program and the Faculty of Social Sciences Exchange Program, we have set up an exclusive exchange program just for journalism students. And our partners include some of the world's top journalism schools. In the United States, we partner with the University of Missouri, the University of Maryland, and the University of North Carolina. In Europe, we have partners such as Sciences Po in Paris, the University of Navarra in Spain, and the Danish School of Media and Journalism in Europe. So what will you learn while you're here in Hong Kong? Here are some of our core courses. In your first year, you will learn the principles of journalism. What is journalism? And more specifically, what is good journalism? What do journalists do? How do they act? And how, importantly, do they act ethically? You'll take a full year news reporting class where from the very first day, you will be a living, breathing reporter. We're going to send you out into the field to talk to people, interview them, get news stories, and come back and write them up. In your second year, you're going to expand your studies to include other media, video, photography, and social media. So by the end of your four years here, you'll be an outstanding communicator across all media. But part of what we do here is learning by doing. We believe in experiential learning. And that's why we have all of our students do at least one summer internship. This is an opportunity for them to put the skills they learn in the classroom into practice in real life. We have extensive ties with all the world's major media organizations. Here are some of our internship partners, most of whom we've been working with for more than a decade. You can see they span all the major worldwide news organizations, CNN, uh, the BBC, but also local media like the South Shore Morning Post, uh, The Standard, and RTHK. 
We also have international partners such as Phnom Penh Post uh, and the Jakarta Globe. And as mentioned in our tagline, we are a double major program. This is another important part of our program and something that makes us quite unique. We believe journalism is important, but we also want to feed our students curiosity throughout the time they're there. And we also want to give them an opportunity to study what they want to study, pursue their passions. So all of our students pursue a second major, and the choice is entirely up to them. As you can see, many students choose social sciences as their second major, things like sociology, things like anthropology, uh, psychology, criminology, economics, but fully one quarter choose something that's not even on this list. And here is where the real diversity of our students comes through. Some of our students combine their study of journalism with fields like art, music, computer science, all very powerful combinations. And you can imagine we're very, very proud of our students. Here's a recent picture of some of them. You can see it's a very dynamic, interesting, fun bunch. And it's a family. We're a very small program. We take only about 30 or 40 students a year. And you're probably asking yourself at this point, how can you join our family? Well, I want to stress that we take students from the JUPAS program in Hong Kong, the non-JUPAS program, and students from all around the world. It depends on the year, but typically about half of our students are successful applicants are from Hong Kong, uh, a mix of JUPAS applicants and non-JUPAS applicants, and about 40% or so from overseas. That includes mainland China, it includes all the countries you saw on that slide earlier. We love students who have an IB diploma, we love students who take their A-levels, uh, SAT, we also take uh, applicants with SATs. So um, you know, no matter what your, your criteria of admission, we're happy to talk to you. And I also want to stress that we believe you are about far more than your test score. And that's why we ask all of our shortlisted applicants to come in for an interview. If you're not in Hong Kong, don't worry about it. We can do an interview by Skype. Because we want to get to know you a little bit better. We want to tell you more about our family and how you might be able to join us. So uh, at that point, AJ, is there anything else I've, I've forgotten? Because I, I do tend to forget things when I, when I do this. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, but, uh, just looking at the chat box, yeah. it looks like uh, Alicia was talking about interviews. Right? They, interviews? They've mm -hmm. already answered that uh, whether or not interviews would be an individual or group. Uh, can ah, you that's expand a really, on that? That's a really good question. We do both, actually. Now, for students who are applying from outside of Hong Kong, obviously we can't do a group interview. We will do a Skype interview with you. Uh, we'll set it up at a time that's convenient for you. And you'll talk with one of our faculty members. And although we call it an interview, we'd like to think of it as more of a, uh, a conversation, really. It's a chance for you to ask questions that you have, and it's a chance for us to get to know you a little bit better. And there's nothing at all you can do to prepare for this. We just want to get to know more about you. It's not a test at all. And there's no secret questions that you can uh, tell us already? So uh, no secret questions? No, no. But I will tell you, uh, the, the best thing you can do to prepare for this, if you really want to prepare, is just tell us about you. And tell us about your interests, what you're, what you're passionate about. That's what we really want to know. Yeah, that's pretty good. I have a question, actually. Yeah. Um, what do you think makes a successful applicant for a journalism Ooh. program like ours? Um, you know, that's a, that's a tough question. There, there's no one thing that makes for a successful applicant. As, as I mentioned, curiosity is really important. We want students with wide-ranging curiosity um, that, that we can help feed while, while they're here. Uh, we want students that, that read widely, that's important. And we want students that aren't afraid to ask questions. There's a lot of very strange stuff going on in this world. Uh, and we want students that are not afraid to ask questions. Uh, it's something that we all, I think, should be doing more of. Hmm. Um, I just got a message, actually, like, earlier before this. Huh? And they're asking me, like, my score is aren't really matching what you're asking mm. for, right? The, the, the minimum score is a 25, I think, and I have a 24, for example. Uh, will you take that into account in terms of, uh, can I actually get in? Well, again, you know, you, we believe you're more than about just test scores. Uh, we, we do have certain university minimums, and these are on the HKU website, also our uh, jmsc.hku.hk. Uh, website, you'll, you'll, you'll see our scores there. But you know, don't take those as, as, as set in stone. We do want to be as flexible as possible within the university guidelines. So you know, don't feel shy about applying. Uh, and you know, we, we, we will try our best to, to help get to know more about you. And if your test scores are not that great, well, give it a shot anyway. We'd love to talk to you. 
Cool. Yeah, we have one more question here. Um, what? Oh, actually, I actually have a couple more. Uh, what? This person named Chen. What kind of second majors are available? When can I select one? Ah, good well. Um, as, as I mentioned, our, our, we want to have as broad a choice as possible for your second major. So basically, you're allowed to choose any second major that's available in, in, in Hong Kong U except for medicine and law, mainly because, like our program, those programs have um, separate admissions requirements. So you can't study as your second major in medicine or law, but pretty much anything else uh, offered at HKU is possible. That's good. Oh, Alicia has another question. Um, is it a must to go overseas for the exchange program? Uh, it's certainly not a must. Uh, we, we don't require it. I mean, we think it's a great opportunity for you to go on exchange while you're here because, quite frankly, it's unlikely that you will ever have the chance later on in life, once you start working, to spend three months of your life living and studying with people your own age in a foreign country. It's a great opportunity. But we do understand that, that not everyone wants to do that opportunity while they're at HKU. And certainly, if you're coming to Hong Kong U from a foreign country, not Hong Kong, well, you might want to spend all of your time in Hong Kong. That's totally fine. There are other opportunities for you to uh, meet what the social sciences faculty has is their global citizenship requirement. So you can do an internship. You can do a, a summer abroad. Many different opportunities there if you don't want to go on exchange. I just got a nudge from one of our colleagues back in the control room, but uh, how many uh, places are there available for the program? Well, that's another good question. Um, it, it, it depends. Uh, we like to be flexible. We do want to take all the applicants we like. Uh, we want to keep it small. So it varies from like 30 to 40. Uh, if, if we get a large number of really talented candidates one year, we'll go up to 40 or maybe a little bit higher. But you know, if, if, if we don't, that's fine. We'll, we'll take around 30 or maybe even a few lower than 30. So very, very flexible there. Another good question from Alicia. Uh, does a principal nomination help a lot for admission to the JMSC? It does, actually. It does. Uh, we, we do look very favorably on, on uh, school principal nominees. This is a, a, a scheme that is specific to Hong Kong. Uh, but in the past, we've actually taken students from this school principal's nomination scheme who have done very, very well. And it's an opportunity to uh, maybe counteract a slightly lower than expected score. Uh, and it's, it's something we, we do look on favorably. Um, in fact, one of our students, um, I guess two years ago, James, I'm thinking of. Yep, yep, Remember James? Yep. James came into James. our program. His DSC score wasn't too great, but he got a great principal's nomination. Um, principal's nomination. He came to our program, did phenomenally well, graduated first class honors. Uh, he went and did a, a year at Cambridge uh, get to do a master's degree. And, and now he, he actually is, is a, an official in the, um, what was it? It's the um, Equal Opportunity Commission uh, in, in, in the Hong Kong government. So, you know, fantastic. We, we love school principal nominees. Uh, we have another person uh, named W. I don't know who that is, but W is asking, do I need to prepare for a uh, do I need to prepare a portfolio for the interview? Uh, you don't need to prepare a po portfolio. If you have one, by all means, bring it along with you. We'd love to go through it with you. You know, show off your work. We'd love to see it. Uh, not required at all, but if you have it, by all means, bring it along. No, I, along with that, I'm just kind of curious. After doing some interviews, um, do you need journalism experience uh, to give you an edge in the program, or what if I have no experience whatsoever? Well, we, we don't we don't expect you know journalism experience a, a, at all. And you know, just to give you an example from my, my personal history, uh, I was a journalist for many years before I became an academic and started teaching. And when I was first hired as a journalist, I, I had no journalism experience whatsoever, uh, and I learned by doing. So you certainly don't need any experience as a journalist. We don't expect it at all. And while you're here, you will study in the classroom, and you will learn by doing. Cool. Um, I guess uh, as we start to wrap up, just a, a, a note from, from, from the control room. Uh, do mention about the Jupus interview and when it is. Oh, good question. See, I, 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 I do bad. always forget, forget things like that, right? I Thank know. goodness for our control room staff. <laughs> um, we, we will be holding um, uh, interviews uh, for Jupus applicants in May, is that right, control room? No. no. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> June 10th to the 12th. <laughs> June 10th to the 12th. Uh, June 10th to the 12th is when we'll be holding interviews for the, for the JUPAS candidates. And remember, for the JUPAS scheme, uh, we will only be able to interview JUPAS applicants who put us as one of their top three choices. 
Uh, and, and the fact is we, we cannot interview everyone who puts us in band B, so we will only be interviewing applicants who put us in band A as of the end of May. Right, control room? Control room says yes. Yes, That's okay. Yes. Thank goodness I got something right. Thank goodness. Um, so if you, if you are interested in our program, we would love to talk with you, but please keep in mind that you must put our program as one of your band A choices as of the end of May, and we will invite you in for an interview in June. Uh, another question, yes. just while we're going through it. Uh, does the program focus on politics and international relations too? Hmm. That's interesting. Well, we don't focus on, on politics and international relations per se, but we do bring in current events into our classroom. Uh, journalism is all about understanding and reporting on current events. So every year our classes are a little bit different. We're talking about what's going on in Hong Kong and around the world in our classroom every day. And it's also important to remember that many of our students choose politics and public administration as their second major. It's an increasingly popular second major choice. And it does fit in very well with journalism and what we study in the journalism component of our program. Cool. I think, uh, oh, wait, oh, there's, wait. There's, there's more questions. Oh, my goodness. They just won't stop coming in. Um, do I need to find an internship by myself? Ah, well, yeah. uh, the answer is no. Uh, we don't expect everyone to find an internship by themselves. It's certainly difficult to get an internship if you don't have any backing or experience. And that's why we have a full-time staff member, Stephanie, whose job it is to help place students in internships and to coordinate our relations with our internship partners. She's a fantastically nice person. And in your first year, at the end of your first year, she'll sit down with you individually, try to get an idea of, of what you're interested in and what kind of internship you'd like. And she will do her best to place you in something that suits you particularly. Uh, and that's just this kind of customization that we'd like to, to feature in our degree. However, some of our students want to do more than one internship. And that's, that's totally fine, too. Some of our students come in and say, well, you know, I really want to do an internship with this organization. And they set it up themselves. That's fine, too. So whatever your preference, we will help you get there. If you want help, we will give you all the help you need to get a really good internship that helps you put into practice what you learn in the classroom. Cool. I, I think that's all for today. I think that's it. Yeah, well, um, please do remember to take a look at our website, jmsc.hku.hk. There's a whole bunch of information on there. And you'll also be able to find profiles of, of me, AJ. Yeah. In fact, a very handsome picture of AJ. Thank you very much. It's yeah. from uh, six years ago. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's handsome. I, uh, anyway, um, so uh, we'd love to hear more from you. If, if you do have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Uh, my email address is on there. Or send an email to the, uh, was it, J I've forgotten what our email address is. But it's on the website. Uh, go take a look. Uh, any questions you have, always happy to chat. Uh, and please keep us in mind. We'd love to see you at some point in the future right here in Elliott Hall. Definitely. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.